Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Hope we meet you well. Um, thank God it's Friday. Um, let's talk about security. You know, it's, it's one of the most important things along with the economy and all of that. Yeah, the policy as well, but let's talk about insecurity in our land and um, how we are faring, uh, grappling with it. Now, we've said it quite a number of times on the program that the link, there's a link between technology and intelligence, and of course, going on to security. I mean, if you don't have intelligence, how can we show up security? Well, my guest this morning, um, he, he has uh, knowledge and uh, he has views also um, on how you can bring technology into the mix. Now, I'm talking about the immediate past postmaster general of Nigeria, Ashwaju Ode Remo uh, BC Adebui. Uh, a fine morning to you, BC. Good morning, Long Kuyori. Nice, Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Indeed, it is a pleasure. Um, it's been, you know, a little while, you know, since you left the office of Postmaster General. But while you were there, uh, I'm sure you got to see a lot about how we place ourselves or can place ourselves in our country. Now, I just wanted to ask, is there uh, anything that can be uh, borrowed or is there any knowledge that comes from the way the postal service works? My question is coming from the fact that for a postal service anywhere in the world to work properly, you've got to know exactly where people are anywhere in the country. That is a humongous task. Uh, Do, uh, how does that work? Well, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, because uh, post office delivers happiness. <laughs> they okay. deliver parcels, mm -hmm. they deliver knowledge materials and all of that. Exactly. They're, they're, they're quite critical to the development of any country for the development, the well-being of citizens of any country. That's right. That is why the developed countries of this world have their postal administrations well developed. There's a nexus. Go to Switzerland, Germany, US, UK, and all of that. Those developed countries, they have very robust, relevant post office. They render based on technology. Yeah, based on technology. They render services that are relevant to the people. Okay. Let me give you an instance. If a post office only sells stamps and writing letters is going out of fashion. Mm -hmm. It simply means that post office will itself go into extinction because you have not tailor-made services, products that will be exciting to the people, that will be beneficial to them, that would really compel them to want to do business with you from time to time. Therefore, if a post office is into international money transfer operations, remittances, People will patronize you because people come to your post office to come and cash out money. They need money. If you give addresses to people, of course, you know the importance of addresses. Um, it was the Peruvian economist, um, Anderson de Soto. The address is such a fundamental infrastructure that you dare not live outside of it. If okay. you don't have an, an address, mm -hmm. you may as well not live not be a human being. Because without an address, the government cannot provide for you. The government must factor you into whatever they are doing, planning, provisions of uh, services and all of that. So, and all over the world, you know, once you're given any form to fill, the first question is name. Yes. And the second question is address. That's right. We just must know where you live in order to cater for you in order to ensure that you are even a responsible member of the society. That takes us into the question of insecurity, mm -hmm. where men of the underworld mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who commit atrocities under the guise of anonymity because we don't know where they live. And now, uh, as you said, any postal service in the world, Nigeria not excluded, uh, must be able to know where you live. Uh, and everybody does have a an address in Nigeria. 
Uh, it's just that it's probably not in a codified form. So it's not a codified one. So, so I can describe how to get to my village where I am. Yeah. That would take a whole paragraph, if not two, to state. So it's no good. It's so not codified. So, so it's no good. It's not uh, based on technology. It is hold. It is brick and mortar, and it can't serve the economic purposes of today's advanced. Uh, society, mm -hmm. uh, the 21st uh, century economy, the fifth in industrial revolution. Nigeria cannot afford not to be past, part of the world, I mean, the global best practice. And that is why it is imperative to adopt the state of the art, hyper-specific, award-winning technology that I own by virtue of the fact that I was Postmaster General of Nigeria for three and a half years. Mm. I got exposed to various trainings, capacity building and all of that. And for good measure, it was Federal Government of Nigeria that was paying for my Esther coach, traveling to all parts of the world. To see how it is that they do what they do. Yes. There. So I feel the need, having disengaged, to give back into society what I've been endowed with. Hence, a special purpose vehicle with which to accomplish the set objectives. You mentioned that, oh, thank God it is Friday. Incidentally, the name of my foundation is TGIF. There you go. The, <laughs> the, the Grand View Initiatives Foundation. As you know, Grand View is my brand. When mm -hmm. they say BCLG, they say it's Grand View. Mm -hmm. Several initiatives that can better the lives of our people, that can improve their lots, that can make life worth living. That's what we are said to do. And one of such initiatives is the digital addressing system. Okay, the digital addressing system. How is that uh, uh, different, or is it different, from another concept uh, I heard of, uh, which is, the uh, procedure of providing every single person, every national, with a specific and unique address. They are the same thing. They are the same the thing. The digital addressing system is the ecosystem. What they are giving to you is an address that is unique to you, that is tied to you, that is yours, but it's, it's, it's based on location. My, it's based on my phone number is unique to me. Yes, it's, it's my unique bank to account me. is number is unique to me. Yes. So you're saying that following that line of logic, this address system would be in unique to every person, and would be able to lead whoever needed to to, to reach you directly to where I, I, you are at. I, absolutely, because there's a convergence of what we we'll call data. Your BVN is a data, isn't it? Your NIN is a data, isn't it? But in the addressing ecosystem, the digital economy ecosystem, if you have NIN, you have BVN, and we don't know where you live. It is incomplete because you are still outside of the provision of government. This address is tied to a physical location where you live. And the way it works, is that you, you would go into the Play Store, Android Play Store, click on our app, and follow the prompt. It will say, claim your address. You will input your name. You will input your telephone number. And then it will ask you to claim your address. Once you click on it, it's going to give you an address. That, because you have inputted your telephone number, your BVN is automatically captured. Because your BVN is integrated with NIN, those ones are captured. And then those information will be tied to you. Your photograph will be taken and uploaded into a data center. What that means is that you have a convergence of data, your NIN, your BVN, your tag on your vehicle, 
your tax ID and all of that, which means everything is, you know, is, is. I can see the security uh, positives of all of this. And, um, but um, there are a lot of people who are also, you know, concerned about uh, individual uh, privacy and the big brother syndrome, big brother so, is watching you syndrome. So if you are not a dodgy person, you are not a person who is criminal. <laughs> Why do you want to avoid being known where you live? There will be data protection. Okay. Absolutely no okay. doubt about that. Okay. It's not as if your data will be flying around for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, government has a responsibility to ensure that the society is safe and secured. You know, at this juncture, let me ask, where in the world if anywhere, uh, is this working already? All this over, up and running? All, all over the Western world. They call it proof of address in the UK. Mm -hmm. They call it address validation in the US. Actually, in all the Western world, it's working in Ghana. So, Nigeria cannot afford to be left out. We must be competitive. Now, in Nigeria here, how, how far along are, are we? Uh, uh, on, on this particular path? So, what we need to do is to understand that uh, it is the constitutional responsibility of the local government to give street names and addresses. And as you know, the governors of our various states are in charge of the local government. So, presently what we have is the brick and mortar addresses. United Nations says that uh, 75% of the world has poor addressing system. And 4 billion people all over the world don't have good addressing system. That is the gap we want to fill in Nigeria, that my foundation, which is a special purpose vehicle, will go into partnership with various local government and state governments in order, in order to be able to deploy this award-winning solution. Okay. By the way, in 2018, um, the United Nations gave this award, um, gave this solution an award in WSIS. We call it WSIS. WSIS is an affiliate of International Telecommunications Union. ITU is a specialized agency of United Nations. We won an award in category 18 of the lines of WSIS, just like United Nations has what they call uh, SDGs, Special Development Goals. The World Summit on Information Society also has what, they, what we call the WSIS lines. In category 18, we won an award on leveraging on ICT to create e-employment. That is the solution that I'm talking about. Apart from enhancing security, it will also create employment for Nigerian youth. And I imagine the, uh, not, ju not just the postal service, but also the government has to buy into it. Oh, uh, oh, abs oh, oh absolutely, because government has a responsibility to cater for its people. And that is why we are saying that subnational government, the state government, using the instrumentality of the local government, have to buy into this for Nigerians to take advantage and benefit from this revolutionary mm. award-winning idea mm. that will impact on the society. We are talking about un unemployment. The number one problem in Nigeria today is insecurity. As you know, the engine room of any nation's economy is the MSMEs, the young guys, the digital natives, entrepreneurs who are brilliant, who are looking for ways of making things happen. They are into e-commerce, they are into logistics, they are into all forms of businesses. And giving them addresses is going to enhance what they do. All the e-commerce companies all over the world lose about 30% of their profits because of poor addressing system. But once we adopt this technology, it's a system that cannot fail. And it covers everywhere in Nigeria. And that's why... One of the motivating factors behind it is what we call addressing the unaddressed. Yes, in some cases, in Kedja, GRM, and some other places, you have 
robust addresses that are good. Yes. Right, but 85%, you know, in Makoko, in Adegunle, all those blighted areas, they are Nigerians. We must not cater for the elites of this society alone. And, and this is different, is, is this way different from the postal code system, well, the, which is also known so, around the world, and that Nigeria is part of? So the postcode system describes a general area. It's not hyper-specific. It's not ultra-specific. Mm -hmm. The postcode alone cannot take you to a specific location. Okay. Whereas this addressing that I'm talking about, even if it's under the hole, as long as human beings can walk there, you will locate. Because we have divided Nigeria into 300 billion, 3 meters by 3 meters grid, each grid with a unique address. So let me give you the... 300 billion, 3 meters square 3 meters grid. by 3 meters grid. So in your studio, you're likely, you are, you're going to have about 3, 4 addresses. So what you do is to just go to the gate of TVC, Download the address for that particular grid and put it at the front of the gate. When it is up and running. When it when is up and running. Yeah, when uh, it is up, is and, up, when it's and, up and, and running. running. Now, um, that means that you have to come forward and offer the system your data. Now, going back to where we started from, security, you've got to, maybe you, see, you talked about a photograph, you talked, maybe, maybe the fingerprint is involved. Now they're even going to your iris. They're doing anything to be able to narrow it down to you. Now, as I said, this requires you to come forward and offer the system information. The bad guys are not going to do that. We will fish the bad guys out. I'm talking about the insurgents, the terrorists, the strike, they the run. They, 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 no, we are not... Listen, we are not asking them to come and do it. We want to go after them. Because okay. we have geolocated everywhere. It doesn't matter whether Sambisa Forest or oh, whether, yes. oh, you yes. know, High Street in ev uh, Lagos. Ev everywhere. And once the bad guy tries to enter that location, we will know that he is there via technology. Mm -hmm. The way it works is just incorporate this solution into the command and control center of the responders. In this case, DSS, Nigeria Army, Nigeria Police, in southwest of Nigeria, Amotekun. So, or a Bibuya group for, for that matter. For that matter. So if you don't want to get caught, don't just do it because you will be caught. You're going to use CCTV everywhere. And you are moni you're going to monitor everywhere 24-7. That's going to be easier in some areas than others. I'm, think, I'm thinking that Lagos is busy uh, putting up all sorts of um, these um, public cameras. Uh, yeah, or, that's, yeah. That's, that's why, because Lagos run, runs the fifth largest economy, and is by far the biggest economy in Nigeria, is a commercial nerve center of Nigeria, it's a pay setter. That's why we believe that for Nigeria to adopt it, Lagos being the bellwether state of Nigeria, Shall adopt it. And it is gratifying to note that uh, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, His Excellency um, uh, um, uh, Hamzat, 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 Hamzat. Obafemi Hamzat, has agreed that we should come and do the pitch, the stakeholders, because he's also a technologically savvy person. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. going to see the value in all of this. Mm -hmm. And also, we must commend the government of Lagos State for introducing the resident smart card. That is commendable. But if you don't tie that smart card with a physically verifiable address, mm. it is incomplete. Now, this, um, from my understanding, is a, is, a, is a private initiative. Right. And, um, you know, I, I don't know the extent, maybe you're in a better position to uh, speak on that, the extent to which um, governments take up, you know, take up on ideas uh, coming from the private uh, sector, so to speak. Um, bureaucracy uh, can set in. Uh, people, uh, it's possible for the idea to be, quote unquote, ripped off and uh, somebody else present. I mean, those kind of things are issues that, you know, befall us in Nigeria. Let's, let's address the aforementioned issues one after the other. Nobody can tamper with this because we have a patent on it. Okay. Duly registered. I mean, because it's a product of intellectual mm. endowments of 
mm -hmm. tech guys. Mm -hmm. A lot of money has been spent. I mean, I funded it, and I believe that uh, because I want to give back to the society, because, because I'm driven by legacy, it, the money that we have spent may not necessarily be the deciding factor. It is also important to interrogate, hey, Bishadi, where did you come into this? What gave you that idea? When I became the postmaster general of Nigeria, addressing was not part of what I wanted to do. I wanted to be strictly involved in international money transfer operators license, that is, remittances from diaspora, $23 billion every, every year. I wanted to do stamp duties, convert uh, the old adhesive stamps into electronic stamps so that we can generate for um, money for the post. I wanted to go, to go into e-commerce and all of that, which is growing exponentially. But we had a, a capacity building organized by um, Oracle and all the heads of MDAs were invited, including me and then Provost Marshal uh, Yemi Boboye. After I made the presentation, it was him that challenged me. He said, and I want to quote him, Ashwaju, I know you very well. This is an opportunity for you to live up to your name. Don't attempt to embark on many programs as Postmaster General. Just try to sort out the problem of addressing that generations yet unborn will be grateful to you. You know, he's a, he's, he's, he's a road traffic man. He's somebody who is into saving lives, and he understands the importance of addressing. So I took up the challenge, and here, here we are. Here, we, here are. we are. And why I actually took up the challenge was that I went to Ghana for Cote d'Ivoire for one of these seminars. And Ghana wanted to sell addressing solution to Nigeria. It was a personal insult to me. <laughs> that Ghanaians, so better. How, how, how can you are not as brilliant as well, endowed well, as, well. as Nigerians? Well, that, the, the Ghanaian listening to this might, no, might no, take exception. No, there's no, there's no argument know. about that. Well, I, think, I, but, think, I think it's a settled issue. But you're not but about me, putting any particular African I'm not, people I'm down. I'm not. I'm yeah. not. In mm. any way, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. But I'm only saying that Africans look up to Nigeria because Ooh, of yes. leadership. Oh, yes. So that's not now, the thing. Do we always deliver? On that, uh, that. Uh, well, that's, that's why we need to up our game. That's why we need to ensure that uh, we subscribe to global best practice. And part of it is what I'm talking about. We are talking about Ghanaians not being as endowed as us. But because we have failed to offer leadership, Ghana has introduced this solution and it's working perfectly for them. And there are people who say that things work in Ghana. Oh, absolutely. You know, but it's never too late. Things work in Ghana. It's never uh, too late. We, 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 we can't hold our breath waiting to say that about Nigeria. Now, I just said that, so I mean, kudos to Ghana, but you're saying that, look, we're the big brother. That's what you're saying. It's never too late, and that's why some of us are rooting for Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinumbu to become the president of Nigeria. It's somebody who understands Governance, the issues that are involved, has been tested. Once he becomes president of Nigeria, we will do a catch up. We will frog, I mean, leapfrog, leap that is. Okay. All well, the, we did it with technology. We oh, did, yes. I mean, in telephone, in, 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 in telephone for, yes, for instance. We, we did that. We yeah, that's, 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 Nigeria, that's Nigeria for you. And it's just important that we offer that leadership. And I believe that. Now is the time for us to do it. That's why we must vote overwhel overwhelmingly okay. for Ashwa Dibala to become the president you, you, of Nigeria. Okay, you know, I, I want you to sort of, um, I, I want to understand better how um, all of this uh, is going to, can, can help out in the fight against insurrection, terrorism, banditry, because the authorities need all the help that they can get. But before you go there, uh, Mazi Okorafo in Aruchuku has called in. Good morning, Mazi. Good morning, Sayori. Good, good morning, I guess it's good morning, brother. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Please go ahead. As you are, as you are talking about this uh, digital uh, addressing system. Yes. You see, when GSM started in Nigeria, immediately you call any person anywhere, it will show exactly where the person is. No matter how exactly when I mean how local, how poor the GSM is. But today, only Android phones can work on such things. 
Why is this so? Because that word start GSM in Nigeria, any place to be anybody is special. Now today we know very well that uh, Mazi, Ma Mazi, Ma Mazi, uh, you're talking about smartphones, right? Smartphone capabilities. Because yes. uh -huh, they, it must be a smartphone if it's going to provide you with that, is, that information about who is that calling is now, you. That is, yeah, that is now. But before, before when we start the GSM in Nigeria, no matter the type of GSM you have, you can get anybody anywhere. I see. Okay. Yeah. But today, eighty percent of houses in Nigeria, no address. No route. Now, how do we solve this problem? Because you see somebody now, they will say, go to Susa, you see that up to four houses or six houses, very the same addresses. And we are talking about technology, technology. What advice are you going to give the government so that these things should be addressed properly? That is why we're talking about security, 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 insecurity, is going ravaging the country because of this last in our addresses. What do we do? Because the area we find the solution, the better for us, for business to move, the government has to do the needful. And it's such as we are now on what we call digital business, e-economics, e-business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okorafo. Um, you heard him. So uh, he's going back to, no, no, no doubt, what you also uh, want, uh, which is, this digital address system, giving everybody a unique address. Uh, but he seems to be saying, so how are we going to uh, go about that? Well, that's what we've been speaking about here, right? Yes, I've, I've, ex I've explained. All you need to do is have your uh, smartphone. At some point, you will be able to download your digital address without data. But we just need to start with data-driven addressing system. Just like when we started GSM, we didn't start with per second billing. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so we're, just, we're going to start with this um, using data. Your phone, in your location, input your details, and it will give you your digital address that is unique to you. For instance, the address of my office mm -hmm. is LACO5367. LACO is an acronym for LA Lagos, KO Koshofe Local Government, 5367, that unique, unique number. number to my mobile phone. Mm -hmm. It cannot belong to two people. Okay. So that's okay. why it is hyper specific. Okay. It is about location. Now, people want to know, and I think, um, uh, okay, we should go on a break, uh, but, but maybe you can just slip it in. Um, people want to know how we, you know, can be sure of who we're reaching. You know, uh, you, uh, well, that, that, that is... You share, you share your, digital, your digital address. Mm -hmm. If, for instance, I want to come to your house or you, you want us to meet at a place, all I have to do is send the digital address of the place and you input it in your phone. Okay. The GPS. Let's, if you have a GPS and hands very cool, let's, you... Uh, well, uh-huh. Uh -huh. We're coming to the nitty-gritty, the brass tracks of it all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, we want everybody to be involved in this, but straight away you begin to see a kind of segmentation. Uh, very few people, you know, in, in this uh, environment drive GPS-enabled vehicles and that kind of a thing. We'll come to it. You'll explain it, but I don't want you to be uh, short for time. So let me go on this quick break and then come back. Stay with us, please, and we'll be right back. Okay, um, thank you for staying with us. And uh, we, our guest is uh, Ashwa Yodiremo BC Adebui. He's a lawyer, entrepreneur, immediate past postmaster general of Nigeria. Uh, before I go any further, I understand that Reverend Dominic has called in from Ali Mosho. Good morning to you, Reverend. Good morning, Yori. Good morning to your guest. Thank Good you. Good morning. I have a simple question to ask. Sure. This system, can it only work in urban area? Can it work in my village? And they work in Imo State in the vicinity. How do I get a digital number from a rural area that has no street? Or is it only going to be on the Lagos, you know, Lagos State? Lagos is, uh, is great, it's a smart city. Or is it going to work in outside Lagos? How are you going to work? Because the Postmaster General has been a good friend. We will go in Mexico. He has been fighting for everything. When he was Postmaster, I knew he wanted to bring a, a, what I call digital understanding to it. But it seemed to me, that is trying to paint a picture that may happen in Nigeria 2050, not Nigeria 2022. I don't know. How is it going to work? 
All they right. Walk in Lagos, can they walk in my village? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Dominic. Now, is this for Nigeria 2050? It's working. For, it will work for Nigeria of today. The question to ask him is, does GSM work in his village? If he works there, you're going to download the digital address using your phone. So it, it works everywhere. So and there's the a coverage call. aspect to it. You said it's going to depend on your phone. Uh, so there's a coverage, network coverage aspect to this. Yes. And as I've told you, we'll start with data-driven one and we'll upgrade to non-data-driven. That is, even when you don't have data, mm -hmm. it will work. Okay. Recall I said that the whole of Nigeria has been divided into 300 billion, 3 meters by 3 meters grid. No village is excluded. Mm -hmm. No individual is excluded. Anywhere, Makoko, Arochuku, anywhere. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, when I was postmaster general and what you know, working on these things. I mean, I was going with two two mobile phones and I was downloading addresses everywhere I went. It worked everywhere. Okay. Uh, let, uh, uh, Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yuri, and uh, good morning to your guest. Yes. Good morning, sir. Uncle Yuri, I remember your guest has been on, on this program several in the past, and uh, I heard him say that uh, he left the postmaster general post uh, after two years or less than three, three and a half years. Three and a half years. So, I th is that the tenure? Why, why, why did he leave? Or somebody like this that has a lot to offer, why are you in a hurry to remove him? That's just uh, by the way. By the way. Okay, he'll answer yeah. that in addition to what your main question is. Yeah, so he, what he's saying makes a lot of uh, sense. But my surprise is why these ideas are not sinking with the authorities. You know, you are, your, the title of this uh, discussion is uh, Using This Technology to Fight Insecurity. Mm -hmm. The GSM operators are supposed to uh, ensure that uh, SIM cards are not sold to people that are not registered. But we still see kidnappers and uh, terrorists using phones that are not uh, registered. So I don't know how we can. What he's saying is. You know, it makes a lot of sense, but how practicable it is is my is my okay. worry. That's that. Yes. Given the kind of situation and the environment in which we are operating. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the call. Uh, maybe you want to first of all get out of the way. Um, what was the tenure for three and a half years? It was for five years, but um, let's allow sleeping dogs to life. Why I didn't complete the tenure. It's a story for another day. I see. I'm going to write a memo regarding that. Okay. But for now, let's just see how we can impact the society. Okay. And leave that behind. For now. For now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the other part of his question is concern about um, the workability of such a scheme. And I, he didn't add it, but he no doubt means uh, in our environment here. Uh, education is a big part of it. Uh, the development is a big part of it. If he's working in the Western world, in UK and other places, why can't it work here? Why is it that? Don't, don't let us be cynical that nothing will work in Nigeria. No, we're not saying nothing will work. So we are saying, we're, we're saying that? that education coverage, for instance, is abysmal. No, that, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Okay. That education is abysmal. Every, There's every, no family... Every, every young kid is in school. Yeah. Every Nigerian young kid is in school. No, no. So this is what, we, what, no, what we're far, talking about. But you have to start from the foundation. But the fact remains that the greater percentage of people are educated. How to, how to operate a smartphone. There's no... I mean, you see... Well, just wait, Mr. Falani. You see... Yalojas and people, mm -hmm. not everyone that dream with a, with, a, with a phone. So what is the big deal about it? If yeah. you can't do it, you have a son or daughter that can do it for you. And there you go. There you go. There you go. I was going to say that a lot of people still require assistance. Yes. You go to the bank, you see them requiring assistance at the ATM machine. This is, this is about your location. Okay. If it's your, about your location, you are going to be staying with your children. Okay. Okay. Your children, your son, your daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in this part of Nigeria, is there any family who doesn't have a graduate or somebody that is knowledgeable? That I know. 
uh, in this part of Nigeria. Uh, well, in this part of Nigeria. Okay. Let me <laughs> <laughs> Major in Akwa Ibo. We will start good, somewhere. Anyway. Good morning, Major. Yeah, good morning to you, Uncle Jerry, and your guest. Thank you for calling in, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. I uh, please uh, let me make my contribution. I think um well I've listened to your guest. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, I've been listening to your guest. Well, so what I can just say in the issue of insecurity is uh, that um uh, you know anything that is political is take a, a long a long period of time for it to be cooked because what I'm trying to say is that you know that even in in, in security uh sector, it has been a, a politicized and also the level of uh, corruption. When you are talking about using technology, so I don't see that working. Remember what happened during the train attack. Uh, the, uh, the, the minister came out and said that he has been uh, saying this, that they should put a CCTV camera here. Well, even though when it took it to the National Assembly, they did not agree because why? They, there are so many Nigerians that are gaining from this issue of insecurity. But what I can just suggest, what I can just say is that um, um, the, to, to uh, uh, curbs or uh, reduce the level of insecurity, the only thing is to establish community policing. Because me, like now, in my own uh, uh, state, or in my, let me say, my own local government, it's only me that I know the interior part of my village, in which if anything's happened now, you know, if the police, if they will be only patrolling on the on the street. They don't know the inner part of the of the state, in which I can just say, okay, if anything happened now, I can just suggest, maybe this guy will be here, or maybe they will be hiding here. But but, you, but apart from that, you didn't even expect the citizen or to go to the police station because once I hear the PRO saying that if anything happens, you should go to the police station and make your report. How do you expect people from the rural area to go there in which we know the way the, uh, the Nigerian police normally interrogate? So I think they, 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 for my encapsulation, I think that we should establish community policing because those people know where they, they, all these people can hide. Thank okay. you for having me and Major but, uh, so, Sorry, Major, but this is an innovation and uh, as uh, Bisa Adebui has been saying, we got to start from somewhere. But I'll let him speak for himself. Well, let me just say that I agree with that, that we need to establish community police. The police we are talking about would use technology. Of course, they have to. They have to. Where so they, they are, can. So there are two different things. Yeah, but that's why you, 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 the, the issue I have in, with, with this conversation is that you are assuming uh, a, a, a certain base level of... Um, competency of uh, education of, 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 of the very citizenry that this project is about to serve well except we are not talking about nigerians because i do not see the big deal in just operating a telephone how people will sell stuffs in Yaba and all of that, don't they operate their telephone? Yes, because they have an address book and they put their friends' numbers in it, and that's it. That's it. So they that's can, it. That's so the only use they have a for a phone. So, so they can use this for their benefit. Yes. Put your name is there. Mm -hmm. Put your telephone number is there. Claim your address. Okay. You claim it. Of course. You can write it down. Be, be, because people, because people can open social media accounts. And there are a number of questions that you go through before and fill in the answer before they, you have they, it. So you're saying it. that this is not that different. It's not. It's not. It's not that different. Absolutely. Um, uh, someone and, else? and for I people who can't do it, let's do it for people who can do it first and foremost. First and foremost. Yes. Uh, Oladapo, I understand, is calling in. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Sure. Good morning. Yes. Thank you for calling. My name is Oladapo. Um... I'm the national president of Association of Nigerian Career Operators, immediate past president. Of, um, say minister. that again, please. President of... Oladapo, Oladapo from Isolo. Okay. I'm the immediate national president <laughs> of Association of Nigerian Career Operators. Okay, ah, okay. Courier Operators. Okay. I, I, yes. I think uh, uh, BC might know you. I know him. Ah, okay. Please carry on, sir. Okay. Well, I just want to say that, um, in fact, this is a game changer for this is what the country needs. I happen to also be very, to represent the organized private sector in the National Addressing System Council. And so I understand exactly what he's talking about. This issue of insecurity will be a thing of the past. The issue of somebody just moving from one place to the other without being able to track them will be a thing of the past. And so I must commend the Postmaster General 
the new past post was a general, for what he did, I'm sure God knows why, but I'm sure he made a lot of changes and he meant well for Nigeria. I just want to say this we should see to the end. If it's possible, start from regional. If something you can do from regional, this I'm they are starting something with, it will help us. People moving from one place and going anywhere will be a thing of the past. I just want to commend you for this and to say kudos. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much for calling in, uh, Mr. Oladapo. So that's someone who Thank understands you. precisely what we're talking He says Mr. to himself. Mr. Oladapo works in the Korea industry. That's right. He's very knowledgeable about these issues we are talking about. And as a matter of fact, when we did a launch of the product in um, um, Ikeja, one hotel there, I can't remember the name now. He was there, he attended as somebody, a, a, resource, a resource person. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is to give back to society. And help also sensitize us sensitize. On, the, on the potential, the possibility. The possibility. Of what is available. Yes, I mean, I mean we have security issues. And if, you, if we have a solution that I have, that I'm ready to give to the society to use. Mm. Hey, let's just let's just use it. It is absolutely free. Let's tell our people. Yeah, this, when you, cost, this is not. It doesn't cost money. No, when you want to, you can download your digital address from that app free of charge. So if you are not going to use it for any commercial purpose, you don't need to spend money. But people who are into business, mm -hmm. who will want to use this technology to enhance their business and make money. That's different. It's a different thing. They will have to pay a token. Mm -hmm. You know, but, that is why. But for the for, for everybody, for the overwhelming, for, for the citizenry, it's free. It's free absolutely, of absolutely, charge. absolutely free of charge. Um, let me ask, it might seem like a dumb question in, in, against the backdrop of what we've been talking about. Um, but what can you do with this unique address system that you've got? I mean, uh, Somebody wants to, somebody says, send me your address, I'll, 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 I'll send you a parcel. You, 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 you know that under the KYC obligation of banks, you're not supposed to, no bank account is supposed to be for you if they don't validate your address. Yes, right. If I don't validate your address, if I don't know where you live, how am I going to lend money, lend money to you? It would ensure there is access to credit. When mm -hmm. you have access to credit, your business will blossom. Mm -hmm. um, you want to register your, you want to do jam, you want to procure passport and okay, all so, of that. So the address, instead of 14 Mawa Miwali Street, the digital address, the it's, digital address it's, it's, will, will replace that. It's just one, two, three, four word, and the five digit um, unique number which you can memorize. If you can memorize exactly. your telephone number. Exactly. I mean, my telephone number. And I've just mentioned that the office of address of my, the digital address of my office you is, can memorize is it. LACO 5367. So. Then, one other thing that is important that I need to quickly put in here is that even on the smartphone, okay, mm -hmm. the features that you have on these addresses, you have, you have provisions for robbery, LTC, fire, Accidents and all of that. God forbid if anybody is involved in an accident and it requires urgent yes. help. There, from, are, there are apps on your phone from, that can from, help out from, in that from the responders, either ambulance or whatever. All you have to do is just insert your digital address and within a twinkle of an eye, the ambulance is there because we are going to integrate with them. We will Traf integrate with fire grid service. Traffic grid lock allowing. Because we have to bring this thing down to local. Uh, there, but are, there are things that we, we, we can't have control over. Indeed. So uh, we, we will not, because of traffic grid, no, I'm refuse just, to... Well, it's, 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 it's part of the challenges. It is. There are places where you don't have traffic grid. Indeed. It's, it's not Lagos alone. Sunday in <laughs> Aqua Ibom. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Please, we talk about insecurities in the state. I want to believe... If we want to solve this insecurity, it's not going to be a stress something. The people that the people we are talking about at this moment, they are not living. Some of them live in the bush. Let me not say some. Oh, you're going to the security oh, aspect to it, or just the ordinary yes. person. You mean an ordinary person might be living in a very, very remote area that you would call a bush. Is that what you're saying? I'm talking about just incidents. 
Oh, okay. Most more ninety percent of them they live in the bush. They don't live in the house here. All right. So if if at all we clear all the forest, where would they come out and attack the village? The villager. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I I heard you Sunday. I I heard so, you Sunday. So I think. So I think if the government at the moment make use of all those all those bush and turn it into a farm, turn it to a company, there will be no hiding place for this origin again. The Nigeria might actually become a safe place because if you leave the safe place with a man, when he leave the house to come and attack you, another person will say. But when they come from, when they come out from the bush and attack you and return back again to the bush, it's hard to find them. It's hard to capture them. So please, what we ask for the moment, let's make use of this forest. Let's turn this forest into a company. Let's turn this forest into, into a bigger farm where there will be no hiding place for them. All right. We are hungry. But at the same time, we have the food and we cannot have the food to eat. So okay. please, please don't stop talking and go into action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunday, for calling in. Uh, we're going back to that uh, three-meter square grid you said covers Nigeria. Every three-meter square is known of Nigerian land is known. How does that, you know, because we need to go over it again. It's a very new concept. It's novel. So people are still trying to wrap their eye minds around it. You heard Sunday's question. Well, he made allusion to the fact that uh, for us to curb insecurity, all those uh, bushes and all of that, we should develop them. If I had him right. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what development is all about. With time, that's why some of us have been advocating for restructuring. You have Niger State that has a landmass the size of the whole of Southeast. Does it need as much land? No. So let us restructure, have part of the land Niger State is occupying, give to adjoining states so that we can develop everywhere. And then there will be no hiding places for There's a men of the underworld. Indeed. There's a lot of work to be done, but as you said, we got to begin somewhere. We can't be overwhelmed by the... Absolutely. You know. I, 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 absolutely. The, a journey of a thousand miles begins with, with a step. Okay. As it relates to security, because I'm, I'm beginning to take for granted um, the, the whole aspect about our social lives, our, you know, our health and all of that. I'm taking that for granted. Technology has long had a good reputation in those areas. But the also very important aspect of intelligence, in, in, intelligence uh, to help our security, especially against uh, the bad guys, the insurgents, the terrorists. Um, that is probably what needs a bit more outlining for people to uh, better understand. But in the meantime, uh, Mr. Oladun Joye has called in. Good morning, Mr. Oladun Joye. Good morning. And um, let me say this is one of the uh, best things that perhaps could happen at this point in time. Hello? Carry on, please. We can hear you. Yes. My name is Oladun Joye. I'm a town planner by profession. Okay. And I'm um, retired from the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. I was also um, a senior special advisor to Dr. Mimiko, the then governor of Ondo State, on urban development. Um, the issue today is one of the things that we've been um, looking for, street naming, house numbering, mapping of cities. As we all know, our cities and cities across the world are the engines of growth and development. Without street naming, without house numbering, capturing the essence of our cities becomes very, very difficult. We worked on these same items, sometimes with uh, the own state government, along with the United Nations Human Settlements Program, UN Habitat. But we couldn't get anywhere because, again, for whatever reason, I mean, you know, the local governments are in charge. I would suggest that you work with this, I mean, on this program along with our local government through the state ministries of physical planning and urban development. Without street naming, the economy of our cities are being hampered. Without house numbering, the economy of the city cannot grow. We know it for sure that this is the way to go. And I want to really appreciate the former... Um, Postmaster General. Uh, yes. It's a beautiful thing to do. And I will 
honestly advise that you work assiduously along with our local government, work with the states through the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development. All right, then. It is a beautiful initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ladapo. Thank you, Mr. Ladapo. Let me throw open an, op an open invitation to you. My telephone number is 80 3535-5651. I'll take that again. 080-3535-5651. Please feel free to call me, send a text message, so that we can work together on this. The issues are clear to you. You have experience, and you know the importance of addressing. I'll be very excited to work with you, Mr. Olalijoy. Very well done, I should you with the demo. <laughs> you did that one without, <laughs> just free of charge, just like that. that because <laughs> That I, was networking right because there. Because I am passionate, without... <laughs> I'm passionate about legacy. Okay, all right. I, I, okay. I want to be no. remembered it's for just, one thing. It's just a joke. That B.C. Adebuyi, the father of modern addressing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If I do that, I'll be, I'll be pleased wherever I am. I'm not looking for money. I mean, for God's sake, God has been very kind to me. But it's important for me to give back to the society, help people. And by the way, I'm not looking for any elective office. You know, okay, okay. I'm yeah, not, I'm not, okay. I'm not just interested. Yes, so. I'm just passionate about the development of this country because I don't have any other place. And we got to start We've got to somewhere. sort it out ah. and start it, start from somewhere. Clearly, you've been working on this for a long while. And um, there's so very much to it, as you were just inviting Mr. Aladdin Joye there uh, to feel free to make contact so that you could talk about this a lot more than you can possibly do on a TV program. Um, I, I'm just thinking that we're going to keep an eye on this. And as things are developing, we shall also be uh, reporting on it. And uh, hopefully, you'll be agreeable to come in again. At, ten, at yeah. any time you want me to come, I'll come. Please, let's just use this opportunity to talk to our governors in the southwest of Nigeria. Kudos to Governor of Lagos State. Kudos to Deputy Governor of Lagos State. The other governors should please ensure that their local governments tie into this, key into this, so that uh, we can put at bay the problems of insecurity. Enough for crocodile tears when our people are attacked. We have solutions that we can use to save all these attacks. Okay, then we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Ashwaju Diremo, uh, BC Adebui, lawyer, entrepreneur, immediate past president, uh, being an immediate past postmaster general of Nigeria. That's our program today. Please join us on Monday. I'm not making the mistake of saying tomorrow. On Monday, we don't do weekends um, for a fresh edition of the program. Do have a great weekend. I am Iori Folaring. Bye for now.